and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some ephemeral mid-range first donation deck. We got a, a deck that um, you know kind of revolves around um, some ephemeral stuff. We have some shark chariots, some blighted caretakers, a couple dark water scourges in here, um, but we got really powerful top end. The reason why we have a few ephemerals is because of Hecarim and um, being able to uh, level up Hecarim once we attack with seven ephemeral allies. And of course the harrowing. Harrowing with Hecarim is just super, super powerful. Um, so some things I really like about this deck. Um, so the Darkwater Scourge is gonna be one of our largest ephemeral units, which is something that's gonna be really good for Callista. If we can uh, level up Callista, bring back um, like their strongest follower, which that's going to be a 5-5 a five, five life steal. That can be pretty awesome. And shouldn't be too difficult to level up Callista, especially with having three Blighted Caretakers in here. Blighted Caretakers look like they're going to be pretty solid. We have eight one drops so we got, and three Curse Keepers. We have a lot of targets. Even Shark Chariot's a good target if you have five mana. A lot of good targets for the Caretakers, so they shouldn't just be uh, sitting around in hand, um, you know, not doing anything. So that's good. But then besides that, we have two Battling Bjergs and three Ethereal Remitters. We talked about how we have a lot of things that we want to, to have die, and these Ethereal Remitters do a great job of that. They can turn all of these one-mana cards into just some th more useful three-drops. Like, that's pretty nice. Um, you know, Curse Keeper turned that into a four-drop. Shark Chariot into a four-drop. Even Blighted Caretaker, how you we get to use Blighted Caretaker on like maybe one of the one mana things, but then we have this three mana two one, and you know a three mana two one's not really doing very much. So that's perfect with Ethereal Remitter. Turn that three mana two one into a five drop, and then that uh, gets that a lot better. Um, so yeah, this this looks pretty interesting. We're we're basically splashing Babbling Burg to help us draw Hecarums, even though we could draw um, Dark Water Scourge at some points as well. And um, and then, you know, we have a couple Omen Hawks because that card is great too. So let's give this a try. Basically all Shadow Isles, Ephemeral Midrange. <laughs> We're one, two, three. Not bad. Um, so it should be good. I Like Hecarim, super good. We have Rekindler to bring back Hecarim. We have Harrowing to bring back Hecarim. Should be quite powerful. It can be quite powerful out of nowhere, also. Facing Brom and Garen. Is this like a Poro deck, maybe? Maybe? Okay, one Rekindler, one Remitter is gone. Um. Yep, Jester, it's on there. Uh, we'll get rid of the other remitter for now. Uh, that's that's just this list. If you want to see all the decks, you can click on there and that'll get you all the deck lists. That can help out. Omen Hawk. I'm jealous. I have a couple Omen Hawks in here. We don't need them right now, though. Oh, dang. I'm going Omen Hawk crazy. Okay, yeah. And. I'm just not sure if everybody knows how to do that, Tizzle. Okay, I'm going to just sacrifice this Curse Keeper and draw two cards. Make a 4-3. Especially with me not really having anything to do next turn. I just want to make the 4-3 and see what else we got going on. Alright, 
right, still nothing going. I'll just vile feast this. This isn't really the best card to Ethereal Remitter. As a 4 2, because it'll just turn into a random 4 drop. A random 4 drop may not necessarily be better than a 4 2. We, we shall not, rest until all or not that much better. For king and country. Um. All right, that card's pretty good. Sure hope they don't have single combat, so just want to block the 5-5 with my Spiderling and then sacrifice it to Glimpse Beyond. If they allow me to play Hecarim first, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily mind just trading Hecarim for Garen. That's not really that bad, especially how we have Rekindler that will bring Hecarim back. That's not so bad. Maybe we get this thing down to one health. Ugh. Gross. Are there good nine mana cards if we turn Rekindler into a nine drop? What kind of nine drops are we looking at? Commander Ledros, Karina Veraza, Bright Steel Formation. We burn, then kindle anew. Light a candle for many tribes. One Freljord. Yeah, Rasa is a Dreadway. Yeah, Bright Steel Formation, Dread, Dreadway, Led, Dreadway, Ledros. Yeah, those are probably the best ones. Karina Veraza, not so good. Are there any others? Are those the only four? Mina Swiftfoot is the only other ones that there's five. So Swiftfoot, yes, yeah, so we do not want Swiftfoot or Karina Veraza. is the first of many foes. Bright Steel Formation and Dreadway would be the best. Do we have like Vengeance in our deck? I know we have a, I know we have a Ruination. Yeah, no vengeance, just ruination. Brighter things to come. Stay resolute. Today we fight as one. You do have to earn your fate. Well, I didn't get to remitter the rekindler. I wanted to, we didn't get to. Wow, we get to kill Garen? That is huge, getting Garen out of here. I feel pretty good about our chances now that we're killing Garen. Maybe a challenger. Yeah, Stormy Ven got here just in time. Just in time. All right, so this will bring uh, Hecarim, Hecarim, Callista. Oh no, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have played. I shouldn't have played those two things because then I don't have. I don't have room for the Rekindler giving me another Hecarim. Oh well. That's still just the best play. I shouldn't, I shouldn't even play those two. Oh, the world won't save you, Garen. It is 
without armor that protects me, put my friends in Demacia. To attack first. Come to the light. There is That's a 12 12 overwhelm Garen, by the way. Oh man, that was like. So many things that just got, that just got deleted or obliterated. One and O. Oh. Turns out. Harrowing with Hecarim is ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, when you raise the dead too efficiently. <laughs> That's what happens. That's true. Harrowing is super strong with most things. Um, yeah, I should. I just shouldn't even play the two the two things the turn before. I should have just gone with the other turn and had the six spots open. Okay, we are going to mulligan the two remitters. We're going to keep Dark Water Scourge against the burn deck. Lead with the Omen Hawk. This is the question, is if I Shark Chariot or play Omen Hawk and Warden's Prey. I kind of feel like I'm supposed to just get the defense going and play Omen Hawk, Warden's Prey. Up where being defensive is important. What does he want from me? So we have one more it's Omen Hawk trigger. I'm at 20, so it's not. It's not like where Darkwater Scourge is going to be. Right, like maybe I don't need a Darkwater Scourge yet. Because I am at 20. It's not like I need to play it and, and then attack and try to gain 5 life, because you can't gain any more life than what we already got. Blocks there. I didn't do nothing. Really want to draw a champion, of course. Yeah, we have our rekindler that's not really doing anything want to draw a champion. Champion. 
Hmm. I stand for Noxus. I gotta work with this Joker. Gotta have vision, right? Time for the money makers. Wow, not vision? They're just gonna discard. Wow, okay. It does level up Draven, I suppose. That's the bad thing. And I thought I was already perfect. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't have been surprised if they would have used the Flame Chompers to pull the Dark Water Scourge and stuff like that. Um, this is not great. These are two really poor cards to draw. And they had two work with this best cards to have. Small ruination. Well, I'm taking that last turn. Noxian strength. So 17 overwhelm damage right now. Try me. Me taking fifteen. Oh, yes. she does all music. Rules are made to be broken. I know this. People. You should try blinking sometime. I mean, I'm not sure. I I think I'd probably like three remitters. I, this this game would have been amazing to have in a, re a remitter. You know, if we would have just had a champion or a remitter, I would have loved to have either of those. But we didn't. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we have I think we have a ton of stuff that's good with remitter. Like all of the one drops are you know remitter is good with all the one drops. Unit. Anything else? <laughs> Stick your lips out. That's a fair question. Is Remitter better than Wraith Caller? I can see yes and I can see no. Like there's gonna be times you know, times that Wraith Caller would definitely be better, times that Remitter will be better. The thing about Remitter is it does like Wraith Caller takes up two spots on your valuable board where you only have six. Remitter only takes up one spot, kind of technically, because it has the other thing there. Or because it. Uh, uh, it only takes up one spot because. You must um, get by these first. This is gonna hurt for you. It takes, you know, kills one thing and replaces it. So that's gonna definitely matter at times. It does feel like we, we could maybe use just a couple more spells, just kind of in general. Maybe? I'm not sure. You know, like, I'm, I'm gonna play some more games. Because... The sun's out, the crowd's ready. Let's rock 
Cause yeah, like we didn't we didn't have room for we didn't have room for blighted caretaker. We just had too many bodies. Um, and we didn't have you know no Callista, no Hecarim, no Ethereal Remitter. Those all would have been really nice. It just just didn't really like we had a good like first three turns, but we just didn't have anything to do after that. Yeah, I could see a couple of one drops take, being taken out for spells. Yeah, that's that is difficult. Of what spells? The Shadow Isle spells aren't spectacular. Especially since we don't have allegiance. Honestly, maybe Fury of the North may be the best spell, to be honest. Like, Fury of the North's probably better than Grasp the Undying or Withering Whale. Maybe that's the spell the deck should be playing, is Fury of the North. Oh yeah, I forgot we had Babbling Beard. That would have been a great card to have last game, too. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's actually just go with the Freljord spells. Fury of the North is good, and the the Frostbite cards are great. Also, you know, like your Brittle Steel, like Brittle Steel is amazing. You can play that. And uh, you know, Harsh Winds, stuff like that. Maybe maybe that's like the place to go. Even Vile Feast, like I don't, I don't, I don't really think Vile Feast is very good, to be honest. We, we shall pierce their treasonous us. I gotta get out of here. Orange spray making uh, Legion Grenadier is really nice. It's happened a couple of times for us. Up there in the mountains. Unfortunately, this looks like this is going to be Radiant Guardian, how they didn't play anything responding to the other two. This is very likely Radiant Guardian, so we got to figure out how we're going to deal with that. Which, I don't have a great answer for how we're going to deal with Radiant Guardian. Will be served. Just got to block it a couple of times, I suppose. Yeah, I could definitely see getting rid of Vile Feast because we don't we don't really have the room for the spiders anyway, and this um, it's not really necessary in this this meta game. It doesn't really kill things you need to kill. Yeah, I I agree, Jolteon. I just don't I don't think this is a the meta game for Vile Feast. I don't agree there. Not done yet. Yeah, I couldn't. I can. Yeah, let's let's try changing this deck up just a little bit afterwards. If you know, you know, it's okay with you, Stormy Ven. Maybe try playing like one Vengeance, one or two Harsh Winds, 
Um, am I playing you, Curse Keeper? No. Why has Valfi's been an auto include? I I haven't been playing Valfi's in my Shadow Isles decks recently. Not too big on it myself. You gotta believe me. I will end this here. I know a challenge when I see one. Play two ruinations. Could see that. GG's. That was a clutch glimpse beyond draw. They don't get to gain life with the Radiant Guardian. And we get our 7 damage in. I think Fury of the North could just be like the, the best spell. Alright, so this is what I would recommend. Let me know what you think. Um, Stormy Ven, you know, this is your deck. So I'll just kind of do some changes. So if we take out a couple of one drops, we take out the Aristocrats, take out these Vile Fees. Um, we'll play three Furies, one Vengeance, one Harsh Winds. Maybe a second har harsh winds. We don't really have to worry. Like we're not an allegiance deck. We can play some some fairly old cards. Um. Yeah. So even just just changing that, yeah, that's not that's not very much changing. This will like Fury of the North will just give us removal against large units because it'll turn our other things to with the plus four plus four. It'll give us good removal against large units. How does that look if we just change those two cards, those those five cards? You know, just get rid of Vile Feast and then the that extra, you know, the um, sixth and seventh one drops. Makes sense. Okay, cool. Let's try this. But yeah, a second ruination in play. You know, like we'll we'll see. We don't don't need to change up a ton about the deck immediately. I'm going to change the deckless commands with those. Since we're going to be, like, since our deck is in combat so much, Fear of the North will really help us kill some large stuff. Like, Fear of the North is just a great card. It really is. And so is Harsh Winds. Get one of those, one Vengeance. Okay. Sejuani Ash. Um, yeah, I'll keep Glimpse on. Alright, so I'm I'm very happy that we get the attack token turn three, so you, we get to play the turn two curse keeper, turn three caretaker attack. That is ideal. And then just kind of keeping, keeping Glimpse Beyond, I guess, to see just kind of what happens after that. Shark Cherry, you good? These old eyes still see far and clear. I wish you can have you and play Shark Chariot. I could turn four, just play Shark Chariot, and then Glimpse Beyond the Shark Chariot. There you are. That's something we could do turn four. This is just the best thing we can be doing turn three. Gotta get out of 
yeah, that's reasonable. You know, if we, we don't really need they who endure because we have Hecarim and Rekindler to bring back Hecarim and Harrowing bring back Hecarim, so we don't really need they who endure as well. It's a reasonable train of thought for sure. Sharpen the blade, secure the kill. The trap is set. So do I want to play Shark Chariot and then Glimpse Beyond the Shark Chariot, or do I want to play a Fury of the North and kill their Avaros and Trapper? So basically can have four mana kill a 4-4. Uh, four, four. four mana kill a 4-4. Four, four. I think I just want to do that. It's like the 5 one's going to kill Glory. the 4-3. Right me. So I mean, I guess I, I could keep the 4-3 alive, or I can kill the 4-4. Four, four. Just leave me alone! So would I rather us both have 4-3s, or, or I have a 1-1 one, one and neither of us have 4-3s? Probably neither of us have four threes, and I have a one one. That makes more sense. I guess if I would have done on the two one, I would have played around Elixir of Iron. I basically the reason why I did it on this is because I didn't want to risk the two one because I want the two one alive for my ethereal remitter. Because I want to remitter this caretaker and turn it into a five drop. Return with interest. Because five drops are good. Well, if you're the north looking good so far, better than Vile Feast would have been. Banish the unworthy! Darn. They got their own Fury of the North. Our strength is yours. So, I can, I can play afterwards. I can play a Warren's Prey. A war mana blocker. I think we should still get another Shark Chariot back, right? Like, so we should be able to attack and get another Shark Chariot back. Shark Chariot's back. Stand and defend. They had 10 mana. That's true. Vile Feast on that 5 1 challenger would have been nice, but again, Vile Feast just also, like, those spiders just clog up the battlefield when you're trying to. You know, when you have things like harrowing, like you don't you don't Show want those spiders around. They just clog Today it up when you when you have things won. like harrowing. I 
wanna go home. Oh, I should be I should be glimpse beyonding. I don't know why I didn't. Not a big deal though. Casting it here anyway. I was thinking that. Um. Okay, okay. This will be bad if I draw it. I draw harrowing. Be bad to play that thing. Three sharks coming back. The time is right. Ouch. Strike now. That was a good turn for them. This will be quick. This is our homeland. That was a really good turn for them. Dang. Is that a four out of five now? Okay, good. Just three out of five. That's a high roll. <laughs> wow, that was crazy. I assume that it's still better to kill Ash than kill the 6 6 Hearth card, but. Hard to say. Shark Chariot! Ugh. Was it the absolute best draw? You know, like. Harrowing or Hecarim would have been better. Darn. Why do they have to have everything? Yay, that's good. Stand together. I can find something good for me. Maybe you need a closer look. I can't stop even if I block over here, you know, like I can't stop uh Fury of the North from killing me if they have another Fury of the North. So I can't play around that. I too, sir. Break it, you buy it. So little to ask. Dang, they really had everything. 
happens when Trifarian Assessor draws you a million cards. Super close game. Like, this was gonna go get us Hecarim. Hecarim was gonna bring everything around, like... They kinda had it, they had it all. Yeah, I like the Sejuani Swain. I... It's... It's not as good as Ash Sejuani, like the, the Frostbite deck. And so, like, that's the thing about it is it's just not as good as that deck. And, you know, like, they're the same regions and everything and kind of a similar deck. It's not as good. But it's still quite good. And um, I liked the list that I was playing quite a bit. I gotta play against this deck so much. That's my least favorite deck to play against because it's so good. Uh... Oh no, I can see like all of these cards helping. Should I not trade and hope that we can have them trade with Callista in play later? I guess so. I don't even know if it's good just to play Shark Chariot out, or if we want to save the mana. Usually I'd be playing Shark Chariot out. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and play Shark Chariot out. It's a good card to draw. I don't know, they pass priority. I kind of want to just pass back. Kind of don't even want to attack and just pass back. It's only two, it's only two mana. They're just going to Brittle Steel and then Culling Strike. That's definitely the thing that I was worried about the most. Should have just passed back. Yeah, uh, Lucho, we just played against you? Yeah, that was a great game. We just played. Good games. Dang it, I should have passed back. It's just so weird to just not get that attack in, but, you know, like, I would have had the Fury to help protect. Man, we just have nothing now. As the arrow flies. Drew all late game, unfortunately. And these, so these Furies could have been Vile Feast, I guess. Um, I don't know if, like, Vile Feast is really, I mean, Vile Feast would just help keep us alive a little bit, I suppose. But it's not like Vile Feast would be a great card. I mean, I think, I think the Furies are better. It's just... Line up. Their deck's just ridiculous. Thank you. 
Return to us. Wonder how this game would have been if I would have passed priority, because then they wouldn't have been able to play Ash and kill my Galista and all that kind of stuff. The turn before. Wonder what would have happened with this game if I would have just passed priority. I mean, they would have just been, you know, they would have been a little slower. They wouldn't have had both of these in play. Show me a target. It would have been a lot, a lot better for me. I'll lead us to victory. I don't know anything that, that beats this at Sejuan yet, though. I, I don't know anything that beats it, to be honest, though. I'm very skeptical when people say that they have a deck that beats it. I'm very, very skeptical. Vengeance will come another time. <laughs> um. I'm playing another one. That game was just it was really just nothing. I want to I want to play another game. So I'm going to cuz I can do whatever I want. Looks like people have figured out this is a one deck meta game. Looks like people have finally figured that out. Nothing escapes my world. I don't really have any like good suggestions on what to do about um, about the Ash Sejuani deck what what they should change about it I don't I don't know I don't have any like great suggestions with that what does he want from me the trap is set Okay, got a ruination. That could be uh, quite useful later on. We'll see. We, we shall pierce their treasonous us. So four three blocks five four five four blocks three three. Yeah, it is just really good at everything. You're right, it has one, one side board wipe with reckoning, the instant combat winning combat tricks. Yeah, like the the brittle steel harsh winds just dominate combat. It has the largest units just across the board. 
It has the best card draw with Triferian Assessor. And it also has the instant win condition with Ash. It has everything. It has the cheapest the cheapest tricks with Elixir of Iron Brittle Steel. Um, I don't know if like that's where you go. Like I don't know if Elixir of Iron Brittle Steel those should just be two mana. Should Harsh Winds be seven mana? That's kind of been what they've been doing a lot of with. Um, Our vengeance has burned long enough. Act now. With making the spells cost more mana. Ugh. Didn't really even get an upgrade. We can just turn that three drop now into a five drop. I don't know, that's just the answer, just make the spells cost more mana. A chill in the air. I mean, I've long said that... Um... Looks like they have, I mean, it looks like they just have Reckoning and they're just going to kill, you know, do a four for one. I can't stop that. I have long said that uh, Frostbite cards are amazing. Uh, let's go with pumping up you. I've also long, long said that Sejuani is the, the best champion. Sejuani, just ever since it was printed, it just does too much. Um, I don't know if that's the answer of nerf Sejuani somehow. The reason the vaults changed to Thursday is because they they would announce the patch on Tuesday, the balance patch on Tuesday, and then they go into into effect on Wednesday. And instead of you opening your vault first before that, they wanted you to open the vault after that. I don't. So the vaults open Thursday now instead of Tuesday. I don't really know why it's better for the vaults to open afterwards, but that's just the reason why. Um, so do I want to go Remitter plus Aristocrat or Hecarim plus Aristocrats? I guess either way we're playing Aristocrat. Did it move? Only the finest serve. That's fair. Return with interest. Knocked and ready. The, the main reason to Remitter Aristocrat instead, because I, I realized that if I would have gone Hecarim Aristocrat, then I couldn't play Ruination, but by going this route, I would be able to play Ruination. But it doesn't matter, we can't block. Avarosa, guide me. So that's there. Frostbite midrange deck's just too good. It really is. Um, it's just, it's just too good. Maybe more harsh winds. As maybe not three fury, maybe two fury, two harsh winds. Um, you know, in those in those matchups, like you need harsh winds to just not die. And harsh winds is amazing against reckoning, right? Like they cast reckoning, you cast harsh winds, you kill two of their things. Also, um, I think the. Harsh Winds is just great. We'll probably go two Harsh Winds, two Fury, instead of three and one. That'd be one little change that I would recommend making. Um, yeah, there is a lot of power in this deck. It was a little overshadowed by how brutal Ash Sejuani is. Um... 
but uh, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of like really powerful things you can do with this deck for sure. I don't I don't necessarily think it's bad. Um, you know, Ash Sejuani is just great. It's just how it is. Um, uh, Vengeance is just you know just good against all sorts of things. I mean, I, you could play you could play Harsh Winds instead of Vengeance also. Um, it could be a third Harsh Winds if you want that. Harsh Winds is incredible. Um, it, yeah, I could I could certainly see playing a third Harsh Winds instead of the Vengeance as well. But anyway, all right, we'll move on to our next deck. That's it here for Ephemeral Midrange. Hopefully we learned some uh, good stuff here. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.